Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. I would like to welcome you to our special Easter Sunday. You and I know very well that this day is the day the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead. Such a significant moment in our spiritual walk because by his resurrection, it meant that the demands of justice were met and it was possible for you and me to be born again. No wonder we're celebrating. And you know, like we always say, he is reason. There is no body of his in the grave. He is reason. He is reason indeed. And he didn't rise alone. He rose with me. He rose up with you. That's why we were celebrating this glorious resurrected life. We shall not know death nor frustration. You might as well go ahead and call this the Resurrection Sunday and wish as many people as you can. Those who are born again, tell them, hey, I wish you a Resurrection Sunday. Those who are not born again, tell them, hey, it means a lot. Even if you're not born again, you can be born again. It means the gift of eternal life is available to you for free. Oh, hallelujah, he is risen. Now I'd like to share the word of God with you. But before we do, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for the ministration of the word. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your presence with us. Even now, our hearts and our spirits are ready to receive, to be guided, to be inspired, to be corrected by your word. For the entrance of your word, bring a forth light. Our hearts and our spirits are ready to receive this word with gladness and weakness. Speak to us and guide us in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we've been talking on the subject of faith. We'll continue on it. Some of the things I'll share is just um, some items we discussed before. But I'll just expound on it and then introduce one or two things that I believe in my spirit they are critical for this moment. So let's start with uh, reading the scripture, 1 Peter 1, 7. I'll read the first part. Amplify, it reads, So that the genuineness of your faith may be tested, your faith which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold. So I remember mentioning this point last week that faith, according to God, is infinitely more precious for us. So we got to see that way, change our estimation in value of what faith is. If we're looking at faith as just a little thing that we need to make it in spiritual life, according to God's value system, faith is of paramount importance. It is very critical to the continuity and success of a Christian life. So faith is infinitely more precious than anything of value. It's important. It's important. And then I, I, the disciples, when Jesus often spoke to them about faith, that your faith, if it says the size of a grain of a mustard seed, it, it can say to this mountain, move. And he also often told them that, you know, you have little faith. Until they ask him, Lord, increase our faith. And we learned that faith is increased by you exposing yourself to the hearing of the word of God. Because Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. So the more of the word of God you hear as it's preached, the more faith is at your disposal. The more you can build your faith. So your faith, which is infinitely more precious than anything of value, can be increased. Isn't that wonderful? To know that the thing that God values the most, which is so critical to your spirituality, can be increased. And it's the opportunities to increase that faith are all around us. This other day, Pastor gave us a free gift of accessing PCDL. I hope you're making the most out of it. This is the time to build your faith. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now I'd like to uh, take you to Luke 10. The book of Luke 10 from verse 41 to 42. Now we have Jesus here. The Lord Jesus had visited Martha and Mary, the two sisters house, the sisters of Lazarus, who was raised from the dead, if you remember. Now, while he was in the house, Martha went to work into the kitchen, preparing him what to drink, you know, what to eat. And, but Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Martha complained about it. And this is what the Lord Jesus answered. It. It's very important because you get a lot of insight into what the master said. It reads, I'm reading for verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. 
Okay, so he's saying you worry about many things. It's just like uh, nowadays, you know, there's a lot being said, a lot going on. Your mind can be all over the place because you're getting information from the media, getting people saying these videos are being sent. You know, you can end up being troubled because you're not focused. You're not focused. You see, even if you know what's happening, there's a knowing that gives you, you know, uh, insight. It helps you strategize. But there is information that may trouble you, which is unnecessary. So in this case, he say you are careful, thou art careful and troubled about many things. In these times and these days, restrict your focus to building your faith. Now listen to what the master said in verse 42. He says, but one thing is needful. He says, one thing is needful. So uh, a lot could be happening in your life. Um, there's only one thing that is needful. He didn't say two or three. He says one thing is needful. And he says, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. So one thing is needful. And he says, Mary has chosen it. In other words, you can exercise your, your, your right to choose to decide to pursue that one needful thing. And what is this needful thing? It is the hearing of the word of God. Why? Because the word of God, when you hear it, it produces faith in you and faith is infinitely more precious than anything of value it's very important so the lord jesus told her that hey there is only one needful thing and when you look at the word needful in english it means something that is critical something essential it must have it must have so she has chosen to expose herself to listen to the word of god because when you hear faith is deposited and why? Because faith is more precious than anything. Faith is more precious than anything you would ever get from God. Praise God. So one thing is needful. So I said faith is infinitely more precious as key. And then two, faith in terms of hearing the word of God comes by hearing. Therefore, one thing is needful. And you must choose this thing. Don't trouble yourself with a lot of stuff. Don't trouble yourself. One thing is needful. Praise God. Now, I'd like to take it further because we shared on this uh, last week. Uh, um, but there's something more that when you get to know, you build your life into, you know, a spiritual edifice where nothing by any means can derail you. Let's look at... Um, what Apostle Paul says in Romans 1, 17, it reads, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So here we get another scripture that buttresses on the point that faith is important. But in this case, the context puts how is faith important. And Apostle Paul said it's not just valuable, because it's valuable. It's valuable because you have to live by it. So he says you live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And he was quoting a scripture from Habakkuk 2 4, where it's written that the just shall live by faith. So he's not giving us options. He says, shall of necessity the just shall live by faith. In other words, the, the day you choose to live a victorious, glorious spiritual life, there's no other way you can live it by but by faith. That's why faith is very precious so he says he just shall live by faith in fact he went on to emphasize on this point by saying again in galatians 3 11 and hebrews 10 38 he says the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith go ahead and say it with me i'm just and i live by faith oh hallelujah if every christian in the whole world will know this that you, you don't live by bread you don't live by your job you don't live by your career you live by faith you don't live by the mercies of the devil you live by faith oh hallelujah so he says it just shall live by faith now watch this because when you say by it's 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 you are indicating the means of achieving something when you use by in english it means you're, you're focusing on the means the modus operandi or the, the basis on which something is achieved. So we can maybe give an example that I, I want to travel to maybe Cape Town or New York. So how am I going to do it? I'll say I will travel or I'll go by plane. So plane 
or an aeroplane. It could be an Airbus is the means by which I'll be transported from place A to B. So where you are now, if you're not happy about it, you're not satisfied with a switch of provision and experience you're having, maybe you're having, you know, challenges in your body, finances, there's a way to be transported from place A to B. It is a means of faith. So he says, for you to make it day by day, what carries you from day one to day two is faith. For you to move from the house where you're staying to the bigger house you've been aspiring for, it is faith that will take you from the small house to the bigger one. For you to live a healthy life, you know, that is robust and which is displaying a divine aspect you know, it can only be done, you're transported and carried to that reality by faith. How precious is faith? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, there are many things you could have read in the Bible that has created, you know, a contemplation of possibilities of what you can do, the miracles you can do, the authority you can exercise. There's only one means by which you can reach that ideal level, it's by faith. It is by faith. There is no challenge with grace because Romans 5 tells us that we have access to this grace by faith. So faith takes you to that ideal place. So you make it day by day until the coming of Jesus. You make it by faith. So how are you going to make it from now until eternity? By what means? By means of faith. How are you going to stay safe and enjoy life with you know, with gladness and joy and celebration, is by faith. So the just shall live by faith. God did not give us an option B. It's only one option. It's option A. It's a life of faith. And I say it, when you say by, it indicates a means by which something is achieved. So the means to a deeper, you know, glorious spiritual experience is by faith. This is amazing. Now I would like to read the same scripture, but um, reading NLT, Version and it reads, this good news tells us of how God makes us right in his sight. This accomplished, this is accomplished from the start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. So how does a righteous person have life? It's through faith. And not just any life, not an ordinary life, but a glorious, victorious life. It is by faith. Oh, hallelujah. So the just shall live by faith. Now, I've emphasized on three things so far, if not four. One, faith is infinitely more precious than anything of value. And then two, faith can be increased. And how? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you now place a premium value on faith, you speak like our Lord Jesus, who says only one thing is needful. And why is it needful? It means you can't live without this essential. It's so needful because the just shall live by faith. Without your faith being built, you can't live a fulfilled life. Frustration will become rapid. Challenges will be there. But with faith, you can live a life that God intended for you. You can become God's dream. Thank God for the faith and the provisions he has made for faith. One thing is needful and the just shall live by faith. Now, it, it's important to emphasize on this. Because my presentation, particularly now, is to present to you this truth in a way that will change the value you assign and accord to this subject of faith. That's not something you muddle up with everything else. You don't mistake it and then accord it a lesser value than God has accorded and assigned to it. According to God's wisdom, he's telling us faith is more precious than anything, infinitely, without limits. you got to see it that way. The Lord Jesus said one thing is needful, exposing yourself to the hearing of the word of God. For men shall not live on bread only, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4, 4. So you also say the same thing. You change your value system right now. And then you come to Romans 1, 17, say, the just shall live by faith. You now say, the life I'll continue living from now on, it is a life that is lived by the means of faith. 
and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, take it so seriously to a point where Apostle Paul tried to drive this point into his audience to tell them, hey, don't make mistakes about it. He's the same one who quoted Habakkuk 2.4. They just are by faith. He quoted it three times in three different epistles to two, three different audiences. But in this one, he, he wanted to drive it close to home. And I would like to quote what he said. We are reading message translation, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. And it reads, we are not in charge of how you live out the faith. Looking over your shoulder, suspiciously critical. So we're not in charge. We're not in charge. So thank God for people who instruct and guide you to do the word of God. But technically, you are in charge of your own life. It is your own choices that you make. So Apostle Paul is reminding them that we are not in charge of how you live out your faith. Now, he goes on to say, we are partners working alongside you. So my, my preaching to you right now, it's a proof of my partnership. I'm trying to help you develop faith. Like pastor always teaches us to develop our faith because the reason is this, what is this? He says, working alongside you, joyful, expectant. Why? This is the key part. He says, I know that you stand by your own faith, not by ours. So Apostle Paul is saying, listen, the reason why you got to build your faith, you don't stand by my faith. As your apostle, you stand by your own faith. So this faith subject should become personal to you. It can mean the difference between falling and standing. Thank God for the provisions he has given us, the privileges of having access to many great teachers of the world, in particular the greatest of all of our time as a Christ. He has given us an opportunity, meaning the Lord has done, but giving us the best teacher who teaches us the word, but it is what we take of what he teaches that we build our lives with, we build our faith with. And that faith we build is the one that we stand by. You don't stand by my faith, you don't stand by your pastor's faith, you stand by your own faith. So apart from valuing it and making it of a premium value, this faith, and calling the hearing of the word of God to be the most needful thing and to realize that you live by faith. You also got to take it personal. Well, you say, if I don't build my faith, how can I stand? How can I stand now and how can I stand in the future? So it's critical to build your faith because by your faith you stand. By your faith you stand. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. By your faith you stand. By your faith you stand. Thank God, thank God for the messages we've heard. They've provided an opportunity for us to build our faith. And we are not slackening in that department. We are taking that which God has provided and building our faith because by faith we stand. Praise God. I would like to take the matter a little higher. Praise God, praise God. Now, there's more to faith than we can cover in a single session of teaching. There's much more to faith. Now, Pastor told us that faith is the response of a human spirit to the Word of God. Let me repeat it again. Faith is the response of your spirit, rather, to the Word of God. So you've got to hear the Word so that your spirit may respond. Now, since it's not a reaction, but a response, therefore, it is a relationship with the Word of God. So faith, in essence, since it's a response, not a reaction, it is a relationship, a relationship of trust and dependence. Now, John 1, 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. And verse 14 of the same chapter says, and the word become flesh and be tabernacled among us. And Proverbs 23, 7, it tells us, as a man thing that he needs us, so is he. So the, the thoughts of a man, his inclination and his mindset is a total summation of his personality. So what if the man chose to express his, his thoughts through writings? It could be a letter. It could be maybe a book. But in this case, let's say a letter. It means somebody can read the letter from this person and relate to the person as if the person was there. So the letter becomes an extension 
of this person. So the very word of God we read and hear, it is, the, is God himself. So when we hear the word of God and we respond, not react, we are, you know, working out a relationship with him based on what the word says, because the word touches every area of life. And ladies and gentlemen, that is faith. When adjustments have to be made, initiatives have to be taken, based on the word that came to you, then faith is born in you. Praise God. It's important to know. Now, because faith is a relationship, it encompasses everything about your life. That's why Christianity is also known as the faith. It is all-encompassing. It is all-encompassing. It's not just to get something from God. You need a miracle faith. So it's like there are areas that faith doesn't touch. No faith touches everything. It touches everything. It encompasses everything. It's very important to know it. Why? Because when he says you just shall live by faith, he's talking about your total life. So faith is not just to get something from God. No, it's broader than that. It is the entirety of your spirituality. Now, having said that, there is something I want to um, draw your attention to. We have been listening to a man of God for the past two weeks. You know, there are decisions we have to make um, based on the word of God that came to us, the wisdom he shared with us, the revelations that came of what's happening in the present times, the adjustments we need to make. You know, and some of the Challenges that are arising from those who rule and govern based on the things they want to impose on us. Got news for you. You ready? Watch this. Now, there is um, what we call the faith hall of fame. What we have men of old who demonstrated the um, multifaceted side of faith. There's no portion which is so comprehensive in the Bible than this. I call this series the 360 degrees of faith because faith is all encompassing. It touches every area of your life. So it's not so much about getting something from God, getting healed and getting a miracle. No, faith affects everything concerning you. It's a relationship. It is important to know that. Now, there is something I want to draw attention to. Um based on the men of old, like I said. So we'll go straight right to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'd like us to go to verse 23. I'm reading the Amplified Classic. That faith will create in you the ability to endure, the ability to be courageous, to be bold, and to withstand opposition. It is faith that does that because sometimes Christians are, are saying, okay, how do I face the challenge? How do I weather the storm? How do I come out of this situation? That's what faith is. Remember what um, Apostle John told us that, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And then he says, this victory that overcometh the world is our faith. A message from says, says, the thing that brings the world system to its knees is our faith. So faith can be, you know, hand is an employee to deal with situations and it can protect and deliver and it can work inside a person and create such a conviction that no matter the danger, they will do what God told them to do. This is the point I want to bring your attention to. So let's read verse 23. It reads, it says, prompted by faith, Moses after his birth was kept concealed for three months by his parents because they saw how calmly the child was and there was they were not overawed and terrified by the king's decree so by faith moses was what hidden oh come back to this verse and then we skip we go straight to verse 27 we are now talking about uh, you know moses is now grown it's hebrews 11 27 amplified it says motivated by faith he left egypt behind him 
being an odd and undismayed by the wrath of the king, for he never flinched but held staunchly to his purpose and endured steadfastly as one who gazed on him who is invisible. So here he is going away from the palace, and we know the story he killed someone and he's on the run, he's a fugitive. The king wants to kill him, and obviously he would have made a plan to you know to forgive him, but he went away. That's faith. So faith helped him make decisions. Even decisions that were life threatening. The Bible says he endured steadfastly. He could face challenges because of faith. Praise God. Now we, we skip, we go to verse 32, straight to 32 to 39. That's amplified classic and it reads. And what shall I say, Father? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by the help of faith subdued kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promise, promise blessings, close the mouth of lions. It's, it's, it tells you the different sides of faith. They, they became aggressive. In advancing the kingdom of God. So by faith they subdued kingdom. That's progressive. And they administered justice. And obtained promised promise blessings. Many Christians just focus on the promised blessings. But faith can stop mouth of lions. That's what he says. The next verse says. He extinguished the power of raging fire. Escaped the devourings of the sword. Out of frailty and weakness. Won strength and became stalwart. Even mighty and resistless in battle, routing alien hosts. Some women received again their dead by a resurrection. Others were tortured to death. Watch this. They were tortured to death with clubs refusing to accept release offered on the terms of them denying their faith. This is remarkable. So they were told, We'll kill you. But if you don't deny your faith, but if you deny your faith, it will free you. So they looked at the option, they say, okay, death or freedom, but the cost of freedom is deny my faith. Faith is more valuable than what they are offering. So hey, death or not death, I will not deny my faith. So they said they didn't deny their faith. So what happened? They were tortured to death. So what made them not deny their faith? It was faith. It's important to know that. It says, so that they might be rest, resurrected to a better life. Others had to suffer the trial of mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. So, so many were subjected to inhuman treatment because of faith. So, how were they able to endure without breaking, without giving in? It was faith. So, what makes you continue? What makes you, you know, robust? What makes you endure? It is faith. It is a side of faith we need to master right now. Let's read further. They were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. So they were told, listen, um, you can't make it in this life. Um, for example, Pastor told us from Revelation stating that, um, you know, people will be forced to have the mark of the beast. If they don't have that mark of the beast, they can't function in the society. The economy has no provision for them. They are excluded, you know, from the community. And then the Lord tells us in Romans 18, in Revelation 18, that anyone who has the mark of the beast will be cast into the lake of fire along with the demons and the devil himself. So they you can't have a relationship with God that you know the consequences of those who accept the mark of the beast and when you know that it doesn't matter the threats of anybody else because god has already spoken who's bigger and greater than god so even if your life is threatened let it be threatened we're not afraid that's what faith does faith can look in the face of danger and doesn't flinch so they were stoned to death. They were told, denounce your faith. They said, well, go ahead, kill us. We will not change our confession. We believe in the living God, no matter what happens. And to believe in God is not a question of statement. It is doing what the word says, because the word is the very personality of our father. Let's read further. 
So they were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were sown asunder. Do you know to be cut in the middle? And they were slaughtered by the sword. While they were alive. So they were cut in the middle from top down. I wonder how painful it was. But the faith they had made them enjoy it. He says, while they were alive, they were slaughtered by the sword. They had to go about dreading the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruelly treated. Men of whom the whole world was not worthy, roaming over the desolate places and the mountains and living in caves and caverns and the holes of the earth. And all these, though the one divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. So they received divine approval. They didn't give up. They didn't denounce the faith. They didn't deny the faith. They kept going. In other words, they didn't break the word of God. So their faith inspires us to stand our ground now. But come rain, come shine. We'll do what God has asked us to do. In his word. Come hardship, we'll be found serving him. The way he told us we should. And we will not do what he said we shouldn't do. So no mark of the beast on you. No chip inside you. No vaccination. No, 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 no. No. So we refuse. If push comes to show up and these things are being forced on us. We have faith. And that faith can make us enjoy anything. We will not bow. So we'll refuse. We'll not reject our faith. Because to reject your faith is to do something contrary to what the word says. Even in the face of danger. Even when our lives are threatened. What is our life? Now, I promise to come back to Hebrews 11.23. Let me come back to it. He says, prompted by faith. Moses, after his birth, was kept concealed for three months by his parents because they saw how calmly the child was. And they were not overawed, overawed and terrified by the king's decree. So the king said, every child born should be killed. They should be killed, all of them. But they looked at Moses and said, okay, the king is powerful, but we are not really moved. We are not threatened by his decree. We will do the opposite of what the king said. They hid Moses that was faith. They hid him. Now, I'd like to read another scripture. It's beautiful. Let's read Psalm 119, verse 161. Amplified, classic. Psalm 119, verse 161. It reads, Princes pursue and persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. Dreading violation of them far more than the force of prince or potentate. So he's saying, by the time they came to threaten me, my fear was already reserved. He says, I fear God more than what they say. In other words, I, I'm so, 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 so afraid of violating God's word that there is no other person who can make me afraid. In other words, I'm already preoccupied when it comes to fear. I fear God, so whoever comes, come. I'm already gone. I have reserved fear. It's for God. So I, I, I like the way he's put. He says, dreading violation of them. Those words. He said, I'm in awe of your words. I'm in awe of your words. This is, you know, King David talking. This is amazing. This is remarkable. In, in the same way, they, they hit the child Moses because though the king spoke, he, he has authority, he has power, but thank you for your talking. But when, when, when it comes to my attention and the one I adore and fear, it is God. I don't fear man. I don't fear man. In fact, the Lord Jesus went on to emphasize on it. When you read Matthew 10, 28 degrees, and do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So we are not afraid of the things that can be imposed, even if we are threatened with jail. I was already dreading to disobey God. So I fear God more because if you now do what you are told to do and it contravenes the word of God, 
You're already saying, I fear the system more than I fear God. Before they threatened you or me, I was already in awe of God's word. And then he says, dreading violation of these words, far more than the force of princes. We're not saying they're not capable of doing it. They can, but when we compare the two, I would rather go and visit my fear for God. Is it not like the story of Shadrach, Mission, and Abednego and Daniel 3.16? They were set up because they were favored by the king. And a statue was created that at the blowing of the trumpet, everybody should bow. But in verse 16, Shadrach, Mission, and Abednego did not bow. And they even said, oh, king, live forever. We are not careful in answering you this matter. In other words, we are not even thinking about what to say. What to say is already there. We will not bow. He says, we are not careful. We are not trying to contemplate and weigh the options. There's no option for us. God says left, it's left. Even if forces will tell us go right, we will rather be at the mercy of God than the forces. Even if the forces will destroy us. We are only afraid of the one who destroys both the soul and spirit. And that is God. The soul and God rather. So, Shadrach, and Mishra, and Abednego did not bow. They refused to bow. They refused to bow. They said, we are not careful in answering you this matter. The God we save will deliver us. Even if he doesn't, we will still not bow. In other words, by the time you threatened us, we had no fear left. Because all the fear we have is of, of God. We are so in dread of violating his word that we, we don't mind jeopardizing our lives. Putting our lives on the line, even dying for it. We would rather please God than please man. These are key moments in life where we got to make decisions. Don't bow, don't bow, don't bow, don't bow to situations. Every word you have read, every word of God you have heard, it is God talking to you. Don't set it aside and give yourself options that I'll do it when situations are permitting. No. Speak like David that I am in, I'm dreading in, to violate this word. And don't bow. Don't bow to needs. Don't bow to sickness. And don't bow to anything that can be imposed on you. For you are not awed by anybody. It is God you fear. I see you making progress. Come rain, come shine. You are not moved, you are not shaken. No, we are not bothered. In other words, uh, because I, I heard that right now if you want to give birth, you got to go through the test and I think that we impose their, you know, forced vaccination. Refuse. Refuse. If you are told you die, I'm not afraid of what men can do to me. It is God we fear. I'm, not, I'm, I'm in awe of your word. It is your word I don't want to violate. But anything that a man imposes, if it's against your word, I'd rather be a tyrant. That's what David said. So what am I saying? When you look at faith from the perspective of a relationship, Faith cares for every situation in life. And it is faith that will preserve you until the coming of Jesus Christ. I see you standing your ground. You're trying to figure out what to do. What if this is imposed on you? What if this is, is forced on you? You don't need to crack your head on what decision to make. When your faith is built and you've come to this level of saying it is God. I please not man. Even if your life is on the line and you are being threatened, you are not afraid. You can enjoy anything. We can draw inspiration from the stories of men we read in Hebrews 11. Some who were cut from the top down, but they didn't renounce or deny their faith. You got to grow your faith so much so that you don't come to a point of refusing the one who laid his life for you. This is the greatest gift we ever give God. That come rain, come shine, I'll stand my ground. I will not do anything that will violate my relationship with the Father. 
and I will not break his word because I'm afraid and considerate of my life. Even if my life is on lie, I would rather do God's word than to save myself because I have no capacity to save myself. Only he can. We will be celebrating in heaven with him and we will be celebrated by many that you didn't give up your faith. And I pray for you that your faith is growing in leaps and bounds. That you have graduated from the level of looking at faith in a kind of way. But to see it as something to live by. Not only to live by, but something that will give you grit, tenacity and fortitude. To withstand any opposition. That because of the relationship you have with, the, with God through his word. You're not going to violate any of his word because your life is threatened. In every area of your life, no one will force you to violate God's word, even if your life is on the line. You would rather go through the torture and enjoy it as long as you don't deny your faith. For there's only one relationship that is important, your relationship with God. It's not pain that you fear. It is God you fear. And you will not give up your faith. But you are growing your faith so robust that you are ready to even lay your life for what you believe in. But you will not set aside any of these scriptures because of the current situation where you are winning souls. Not because it's permitting, but because God said so. You are not respecting the circumstance. Because denying your faith can be direct or indirect. You could believe a life that doesn't reflect your faith. Faith is your relationship with God through his word. Where he says win souls, you win souls. Where he says meet, you meet. Where he says, you know, uh, get guidance and instruction from your leaders, you do. Where he says give, you give. Where he says pray, you pray. Where he says forgive, you forgive. Where well, you're not insisting on your rights more than on what God says because you are in awe of his words. You are dreading to violate his words more than anything. May this dawn on you. May it take you from one level of glory to another. That you be saved. Your faith please God. And you're worthy of a glorious promotion. Like the men of old. I pray for you. That no matter what gets imposed, no matter the era we are entering in and the things that will be, you know, enforced on us and being forced for us to do, you will stand your ground. You will not lose your faith. Your faith is prevailing. Your faith can enjoy anything. You are doing the word of God more now. Even when situations are difficult, you observe to do God's word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. You build your fight like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, what a glorious moment we had sharing the word of God. Wow, the Lord is glorious, beautiful, and ever caring. Right now, I'd like to invite any one of you who's watching this program, you've been part of this, but you're not born again, you're not a Christian yet, but you're saying, this is my time. I need to have a right relationship with God. It's very easy. I'll lead you in prayer, and you'll be born again. In fact, we can do it right now. You may put your left hand on, the, on, on your heart and the right hand. You lift it like this and say this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the love that you demonstrated when you sent Jesus to die in my place. Father, I believe with my heart that he was born of Mary the Virgin. He was crucified and died for my sins. And he was buried. But on the third day, he was raised from the dead for my justification. I also confess 
with my own mouth that Jesus Christ is now the Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I'm born again. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm now your child and you are now my father. I will walk with you to learn about you and to save you and to live a life of faith as you intended. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You have just been born again. You can reach to us on the numbers on the screen in a WhatsApp or call or email so that we can tell you more of what transpired. If somebody invited you via the e-card uh, they've sent to you, you can reach out to them so that we can also give you um, ministry material that will tell you more about this new life you have in Christ. Congratulations. I'd like to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for everyone who gave their lives to Christ. Thank you, Father, for the gift of eternal life is theirs. This is the reason why we are celebrating Easter. We are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. I pray that everything that our Lord achieved and accomplished for them becomes a reality. They are delivered, delivered now from every hold and manipulation of darkness and faith is infused in them. If there's anyone sick, Father, I speak health and healing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak strength. I speak joy. If there's anyone who needs a solution, they are facing a challenge. I speak a way out by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, these ones will grow to know you and to save you. And they are hungry for the word. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You've just been born again and we prayed for you. The blessing of God rests on you. Now I'd like to pray for everyone who's not feeling well. Like Pastor told us that with the way the health system is working, your faith got to work. Um, and faith, it's, it doesn't respect time or space. Even now, I'll pray for you and God will touch you by His Spirit. Cancer will be cancelled, TB eliminated, high blood pressure dissolved. I would like you to put your hand where you're not feeling well, where they are feeling pain. If you're feeling pain, the whole body just put your hands around your body. As I pray, this prayer of faith, with your faith, you'll be healed. You'll be perfected from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Pastor told us that we got to have faith this period because you go to the hospitals, they're not tending to the sick. They want the numbers to wrap up so you'll be healed. Let's pray. Put your hand there now. I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for your people and everyone watching this program right now that your power gets into their system now and heal their body. Father, from the crown of their hair to the soles of their feet, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, spirit of sickness, get out of their body. TB, get out. High blood pressure, get out. Tuberculosis, get out, get out, cancer, get out, body pains out, back pains out, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak total healing, I speak total health from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, in the name of Jesus Christ. I proclaim healing right now. It's seeping through every bit of their body, in every fiber of their being, in every cell of their blood, in every organ, in every muscle, in every bone, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I dispel sickness. Get out of their body. Get out of their mind. Get out of their system. Get out of their blood. I speak healing upon you. Your blood be cleansed. Your body be strengthened. Perfection is coming to you now. You demonic forces, you have no right. I command you to leave their bodies now and never to return again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak perfection. Be thou healed now. Be thou set free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself, you are healed. God has healed you. That pain is gone. The headache is gone. Yes, you are healed now in the name of Jesus. Please go ahead and send um, testimonies of your healing on the number and the email that is showing on the screen because you are healed and God's power is seeping through you now. You are healed, you are healed, you are healed, you are healed. You walk in divine health in the name of Jesus Christ. You walk in health. Hallelujah. Praise God.